Hello, my name is Bodie Lloyd, and today I will be discussing some famous works of, of Damien Hirst. Damien Hirst is a contemporary British artist. He's the most important member of the group called the Young British Artists. This group was the most prominent group in the 1900s. He is now 51 years old and continues to make and collect art. In fact, he is reportedly the richest artist in the UK. He has consistently broken away from the traditional norms of art and continues to push the envelope. His work is often very controversial and shocking. His artwork often centers on death, and he often uses unfamiliar, strange mediums to portray his ideas. His installations provide a way for the viewer to really understand the piece and become one with the piece. The first piece by Damien Hirst I'm going to discuss with you today is the physical possibility of death in the mind of someone living. The piece was done in 1991 and was part of his series called Natural History. This work is an illustration sculpture piece of a 13-foot tiger shark preserved in formaldehyde. The shark is encompassed in a container that is three times as long as it is tall and is sectioned into three separate steel and glass cubes. The whole sculpture weighs a mass of 23 tons. The work is very simplistic, containing nothing but the tiger shark suspended in clear formaldehyde. This piece gained national attention and really aided Hearst in his ultimate goal of pushing the boundaries of contemporary art and evoking thought within his viewers. The shark is huge and frightening, positioned with his mouth wide open. If you stand in the front of it, it looks as if the shark may be swimming right at you, with the intention of making you his next meal. Obviously, the shark is dead, but Hearst makes the shark appear so real and lifelike, it still evokes fear within the viewer. It can be confusing to the viewer because the shark is scary, yet it is dead. It is hard for people to think rationally about death and to understand it. We know the shark isn't going to jump out of the formaldehyde and attack us. However, the dead shark still forces our fear of sharks to surface. And that is the very essence I think Hearst is trying to capture. The next piece I would like to look at is For the Love of God, which Hearst created in 2007. For the Love of God is a platinum life-size cast of a human skull, human teeth, and diamonds. This piece is arguably Hearst's most recognized piece. The title of this sculpture was actually inspired by his mother. She was always shocked by her son's work, and she always used to say, for the love of God, what are you going to do next? Hearst uses a real school of a European man dating back to the 18th century. He drew inspiration from Aztec and schools and from the Hispanics. Death is a hard thing to deal with, and, he, and Hearst believes that by making things associated with death so beautiful, it makes death more bearable. The skull is encrusted with 8,601 diamonds, totaling 1,106.18 carats. The teeth are the real t original teeth from the centuries old skull. The piece cost Hearst a hefty 14 million pounds to produce. The huge diamond in the middle of the forehead was inspired from a comic Hearst read when he was younger. He added it because he felt the skull needed something else, so he chose the third eye, which serves as a connection for both his father and Jesus. The next work I'm going to look at is Verity. Verity is a huge bronze statue that Hearst gave to North Devon Council in Wales. She stands at a whopping 66 feet tall and weighs 25 tons. Hearst made her from 40 individual castings, and her core is made of stainless steel. This piece is both weather and lightning proof. It took a very long time to construct and plan her arrival, and she finally arrived in three pieces when she was ready to be erected. She took a week to assemble on site. According to Hearst, Verity is a modern allegory of truth and justice. The state itself is a pregnant lady holding a sword, carrying the scales of injustice, standing on a pile of law books. The sword is being held very high and proud in the sky, while the scales are tentatively placed behind her back. The statue shows the internal anatomy of a pregnant woman, and you can clearly see the child in the womb. The stance of Verity is a reference 
to the work of Edgar Degas, little dancer of 14 years. When Verity was assembled, it became the largest statue in the United Kingdom. When it, there are mixed reviews regarding the piece, and many locals think it is ugly and out of place in their seaside town. But many people enjoy viewing it, and it is, has boosted tourism in the quaint seaside town. The last work is very is a very different piece than the first couple that we have looked at. Mickey was a painting done by Hearst with the permission of Disney. It was done during his series of spot paintings and was very much inspired by pop artists such as Andy Warhol. He believes that Mickey represents happiness and childhood and it is such an iconic image he was hoping to make people happy and nostalgic for childhood. He made this piece specifically to auction at the Kids Company. Kids Company is an awesome charity in London to help at-risk inner-city children. The piece sold for £55,000 and I think shows a really cool and inspirational side of Hearst. Those are all the works by Hearst that stood out to me most. I really enjoyed researching them and sharing this information with you.